Welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Every day I break down AI news, interview guests, and explain the implications of AI in your life and business. I need to ask you for a big favor. Believe it or not, we have around 92,000 people that listen to this podcast every month, which is absolutely amazing. But when you go to our Apple Podcasts or Spotify pages, we only have around 110 reviews total. If you could do me a massive favor and give this podcast a review, I would be super, super grateful. Every time I contact an incredible founder or CEO in AI, they look at the podcast, they look at how many reviews I have, and that helps me to get better guests on the show. So if you could do a huge favor to myself and also yourself, go to the Apple podcast or the Spotify page, wherever you listen to this and give a review of the show. If you've noticed lately, I've been doing interviews with some really phenomenal CEOs. I have some more amazing ones coming up in the coming weeks with some CEOs that have raised hundreds of millions of dollars for their AI startups. I want to bring these to you and I want to get more of those. So please drop a review, go to your wife's account, go to your husband's account, go to your kid's account and leave a review. I don't care. Help us get more reviews, and I promise I will help bring some amazing AI entrepreneurs and guests onto the show. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. In the world of artificial intelligence, one of the most controversial issues is that these massive language models are monetizing essentially your data by sucking up all the data that they find on Twitter and Reddit and every other platform and training models and then selling, you know, their models, access to their models. You got to pay for GPT-4. So there is a new company called Caden that has just landed a $15 million of investment to essentially help users monetize their personal data. Today on the podcast, we're going to be diving into what Caden is planning on doing, what their strategy is, and why I think this is more important than ever in the world of AI. So let's jump into it. I think in a world that is like increasingly conscious of online privacy, a rising tide of startups is really kind of focusing on enabling individuals to monetize their data. The Cadence is obviously one, but there's other companies too, right? There's a data C, which allows users to collect and sell their browsing data to the highest bidder, um, while platforms like Pogo and Tapestry offer rewards in return for access to behavioral and purchasing patterns. Um, but this newcomer that I've mentioned today is called Cadence, and this one's kind of setting itself apart with a bit of a unique approach. So Caden essentially grants users intricate controls, allowing them to decide exactly which data they wish to share with third parties. So Caden's model essentially involves aggregating analytical data on users' movie preferences, travel habits, shopping behaviors, and more. And users then have the option to monetize this data in various ways. So Caden has the backing of a really noteworthy name, that's Jeremy Yang, who is the founder of Yahoo. And the concept for Caden um, was sparked by John Rowe's observation on the evolving online privacy landscape. So Roa, who successfully sold his private startup Acta to Salesforce in 2015, noted in an email interview with TechCrunch that he recently did, he said, quote, for 25 years, users have exchanged their personal data for free services and access to apps and websites. I envision a future where users would be at the heart of this data exchange rather than being uh, passive participants. This is really interesting. And actually, I think it goes like one other anecdotal or interesting anecdote on this is the fact that Facebook tried doing a play a while back, if you remember, where essentially they had an app that was on iOS. This was shortly after iOS kind of banned uh, Facebook from tracking what users were doing across uh, you know, their their phone, if they if they weren't actively using Facebook, Facebook wasn't able to essentially track everything they were doing on their phone as they previously were able to. And uh, in response to this, Facebook, I'm not sure if they started or if they acquired essentially a company that would give you, you know, $20 gift cards and rewards to allow them to track you. And, and there was a bunch of different like stuff you could do there. iOS did not like it, kicked the app off of the app store. Um, there was a whole debacle about it, right? This was kind of in the Facebook versus Apple feud that went on around privacy. Now, it's interesting for me to see kind of a whole new uh, version of this 
where essentially these startups are allowing you to monetize your own data. But Facebook kind of was letting you do that before, right? They would give you like little rewards. There's a couple others doing it. So I'm curious to see what the big differences here are and if these will succeed where Facebook previously failed in this regard. So I think one thing to take note of is the fact that privacy laws definitely have multiplied in 2023 alone, almost 140 consumer privacy bills were introduced or contemplated across over 25 states, including Puerto Rico. And as per the National Conference of State Legislatures, uh, that's where we got all that data from. While in, uh, so, but I think the other thing that's really interesting is that while international legislations like the EU's GDPR, um, and then there's also some domestic laws like the California Consumer Privacy Act, um, which essentially are set up to protect users' rights against unwanted data tracking and sales, they don't actually directly offer avenues for users to monetize their data. So um, ROA recently emphasized Hayden's uniqueness in this space, um, saying, quote, our core offering empowers users to control their data, rewarding them if they share it with a trusted third party. So the Caden experience essentially just starts with users linking their online services, right? So they can link their Amazon, their Uber, their Netflix, um, and they do all of this through Caden's iOS app. And users can view statistics, insights, and even opportunities to monetize specific data segments um, by sharing them with advertisers. So, of course, I know the question on everyone's mind is like, you know, data, is there data privacy? Are they like literally knowing exactly everything you do? Is there a profile being made on you? All those kind of issues. And I think given the sensitivity of the data that is being shared, um, security is really important. So ROA says, uh, essentially, they've told users that all of the data is secured within an encrypted quote unquote vault, which I mean, whatever, they just throw the word vault in there to make you see, feel more secure about it. But I mean, allegedly, it's encrypted. So that should be good. The thing that I find it even more important, though, is that it is anonymized before third party sharing, right? So they're not going to know this is exactly you or one specific person sharing this data. They just know that in general, people with your characters, a person with your characteristics um, has these habits, these shopping habits, these travel habits, etc. So plus users also have the ability to retract sharing permissions or even delete their data at will, which I think is important um, in this space. Now, would I do this? I don't know. I guess it kind of depends on how pinched I was for money and how much I could get paid for it. Um, probably wouldn't be my personal choice. I'm just a bit of a bit more of a privacy uh, nut than that. But um, I, I do see how this has appeal for people and I do see how this, uh, you know, it could be an interesting play. So reportedly, Caden has already amassed over a billion data points and has compensated users by tens of thousands. So they're further incentivizing participants with the introduction of Caden AI, which is an artificial intelligence assistant that makes tailored content and product suggestions based on shared data. Roa believes this offers a more personalized experience for users, allowing them to discover products and deals tailored to their tastes and budgets. Now, that is um, obviously an interesting feature, but the reason I really bring Caden up on this podcast is because of the implication I see in artificial intelligence. So right now, really what they're doing is they're saying, hey, share your data with us. We'll sign it to a travel sites and advertisers and some other people, blah, blah, blah. But where I really see this going is this is going to be a massive boon, whether it's Caden or another company that is like them for uh, AI startups. Inevitably, what's going to happen is um, platforms that monetize your data are, I believe, the gatekeepers right now, but I believe the power will eventually get put back in the hands of the people where um, you will be able to sell your data directly to through, you know, an app or a third party marketplace like this to companies like OpenAI and other people that are training AI models off of your data. So beyond just right, like right now, the big play that everyone's talking about is advertising. I think this is um, I think this is kind of like if you're looking at the gold rush, the the data for advertising is is a much, in my opinion, is probably less lucrative than some of the AI, the data used for AI models. And so I think that um, consumers could actually perhaps sell it twice, advertisers and AI models, but I think they could make a lot of money. And I think um, AI models would be very wise to uh, participate in these kind of schemes and programs because essentially um, anyone, even if you don't have access to a massive database, right, um, you can train a very powerful AI model. And I think that's one of the big problems with, you know, a lot of startups today 
you know, everyone makes fun of all of these startups that essentially are just a wrapper on uh, on top of an API access to OpenAI, right? They're just like, you know, write emails, write articles, write XYZ um, thing with access through OpenAI's API. And it's like, you know, they don't have a very big moat. They're easy to replicate, et cetera, et cetera. The, the, the value in the brand is just in the marketing and the users they can get to use their product. Um, but if they were able to actually train AI models to do some of the things that they were doing and create custom models that were better than open AI and could do things, uh, you know, more, uh, if they could do things that were a lot more powerful, there would be a lot more value in their companies and they would be able to charge more to consumers and potentially grow more. And so I think, um, the big problem though, is that they do not always have the data to do that. And so there's some places you can buy data from, um, but this is definitely one way where you can get access to data without having the controversy of consumers saying, hey, like I didn't give you permission to, you know, we didn't give open AI permission to scrape the entire internet. So I think it's going to be interesting to see if these kind of data, you know, pay for data plays directly to consumers takes off in a sense that um, AI models are going to be going to be buying them from these kind of platforms. On the business end, um, Caden is developing context AI, which is aimed at aiding enterprises, especially marketers and understanding consumer behavior. And this tool is going to answer natural language questions and provide visual data representations. Um, investors are really bullish on Caden's trajectory. I think a recent announcement revealed that Caden um, raised their Series A, right? It was $15 million. And this round included people from um, Neva Ventures, AME Cloud Ventures, Streamlined Ventures, Montage Ventures, and a bunch of others. So I think changes in industry practices like Apple's app tracking that we kind of mentioned before with the whole Facebook debacle, um, some transparency requirements, and I think also Google's kind of forthcoming changes to user tracking in Chrome might have influenced Caden's uh, favorable position because they've raised, I think, a total of $24 million to date. And Roa plans to expand Caden's New York team further um, and develop Caden AI and establish more uh, collaborations with retailers and other platforms. I think that's what they're really spending the money on. And this is what he said specifically about the value proposition, quote, we offer one of the most sought after assets in the enterprise ethically sourced first party data. Um, so I think while marketers might be drawn to platforms like Caden, I think it remains to be seen if users are going to follow suit, right? Obviously, this is very valuable for marketers and AI platforms. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how many users are actually able to attract, how lucrative that um, offer of payment for data is, and if they're able to really grow this and expand this in a viable way. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below. 